Just days ago, the United States launched yet another escalation in its tech war against China. In a sweeping move, the Biden administration ordered leading EDA software giants, Cadence, Synopsys, and Siemens EDA, to halt all exports of chip design tools to China. These companies control nearly 80% of the global market for advanced chip design software, software essential for producing next-generation semiconductors. As if that wasn't enough, the U.S. Commerce Department issued new restrictions targeting Huawei's Ascend AI chips, warning global partners that using or integrating these chips may constitute a violation of U.S. export control rules. Once again, Washington is trying to choke off China's technological rise by weaponizing its control over key nodes in the semiconductor supply chain. But here's the twist. It's not working. Instead of stalling out, Huawei and SMIC are surging forward. Under crushing sanctions, they've pulled off what many Western analysts said was impossible. Huawei has just unveiled its next-generation 6G chip concept, one that promises to unlock unimaginable speeds. And SMIC, China's top chip foundry, has confirmed the development of its own 3-nanometer gate all-around process technology. This is not just a technical leap. It's a geopolitical statement. While Washington clutches tighter to its export rules and legacy leverage, China is building an entirely separate future. One chip, one layer, one atom at a time. Let's dive into the breakthrough that could redefine global technology leadership. The global tech race is heating up, and Huawei is sprinting ahead with a bold vision for what lies beyond 5G. While much of the world is still grappling with the logistics of rolling out 5G networks, Huawei's roadmap is already targeting 6G, a leap that promises ultra-low latency, terabit per second speeds, and deep integration with AI-driven systems. This isn't just iteration, it's reinvention. At the heart of this vision is a high-risk, high-reward partnership with SMIC, China's largest chip foundry, which has quietly made a leap of its own by mastering 3 nanometers JAA transistor technology under some of the most restrictive export controls in modern history. To understand why this is a game changer, you have to look at who used to dominate the conversation. TSMC in Taiwan and Samsung in South Korea. Two semiconductor giants who relied on extreme ultraviolet lithography machines from ASML in the Netherlands. These machines, considered the crown jewels of chipmaking, are banned from export to China. And yet, here we are, SMIC, using only older deep ultraviolet tools and complex multi-patterning techniques, has developed a working pathway to 3 nanometers GAA chips. This defies not just technical limits, but also the assumptions of an entire industry. It's not just a chip, it's a declaration. China is not just catching up, it's innovating under pressure. Let's take a closer look at Huawei's 6G roadmap. Unlike 5G, which brought faster speeds and broader coverage. 6G aims to introduce real-time holographic communication, ambient intelligence, and intelligent edge computing. We're talking about devices that predict your actions before you even make them. Data transfer rates could hit 1 TBPS, and latency could drop below a millisecond. That means self-driving cars that think in unison, surgeons operating remotely in real-time across continents, or AI assistants embedded directly into network infrastructure. Huawei calls this intelligent connectivity, networks that don't just transmit data, but adapt to your behavior, your environment, and your needs. To make 6G more than just a futuristic concept, Huawei needs a chip that can support extreme computational loads while being energy efficient. Intersmix 3 nanometers gate all-around technology, unlike traditional FinFET transistors, where the current flows over a three-sided gate, GAA wraps the gate around all four sides of the channel, significantly reducing leakage and improving efficiency. This allows for higher density, lower power consumption, and faster switching speeds, essential for 6G applications. And the most astonishing part? They did it without EUV. SMIX engineers have adapted DUV lithography through multi-patterning, a notoriously complex and cost-intensive method, and still achieve results that were once thought impossible under sanctions. But SMIC isn't stopping there. As part of its next phase innovation roadmap, it's also exploring carbon nanotube transistors, an exotic class of materials that promise even smaller, faster, and more energy efficient chips. Carbon nanotubes can theoretically outperform silicon in both mobility and thermal efficiency, enabling logic gates at dimensions below one nanometer. While these designs are still in the lab, the implications are massive. If successful, 
China could leapfrog entire generations of Western ship development and set the standard for post-silicon architectures. Combined with GAA, this dual-path approach positions SMIC as not just a catch-up player, but potentially a front-runner in next-gen chip design. This shift is not going unnoticed. Behind the scenes, Western policymakers are reportedly scrambling to draft a new wave of export controls, targeting not just lithography equipment, but chip design software, electronic design automation tools, photo masks, and even training data for AI chips. The logic is simple. If China can build cutting-edge semiconductors without EUV, the current playbook has failed. This is no longer about holding back equipment. It's about disrupting the entire innovation pipeline. We are entering what some experts now call the Tech Cold War 2.0, a geopolitical contest where chips, not missiles, define global supremacy. What emerges is a tale of two ecosystems, one led by US-aligned countries with access to the latest ASML machines, NVIDIA GPUs, and ARM architectures. The other, increasingly independent, led by Chinese firms investing heavily in domestic substitutes for every link in the chain, from chip design to fabrication, packaging, software, and compute frameworks. This divergence could reshape the global economy as countries, companies, even universities may be forced to choose which tech stack they belong to. The age of globalization and semiconductors is fading, replaced by an era of strategic bifurcation. Beyond silicon and machines, Huawei and SMIC's true weapon may be human. China has been aggressively recruiting semiconductor engineers from Taiwan, South Korea, and the U.S., offering million-dollar packages, fast-track citizenship, and research freedom. This silent talent reshuring has played a critical role in rebuilding domestic capabilities. At the same time, China is doubling down on education and chip curriculum integration across its universities, aiming to produce a self-sustaining ecosystem of innovation. In this context, the 6G chip is not just an artifact. It's the tip of an iceberg. Let's not forget, this isn't Huawei's first surprise. Just months ago, they shocked the world with the Kirin X90 chip powering the Mate 60 Pro, fabricated by SMIC using DUV-based 7 nanometers process. That move alone showed that sanctions, while damaging, had not crippled China's high-end chip ambitions. Now, with 3 nanometer GAA on the horizon and 6G development accelerating, Huawei is demonstrating a level of technological resilience rarely seen under such pressure. They've moved from survival mode to strategic offense. Make no mistake, this is about far more than performance metrics. Huawei's 6G chip and SMIC's GAA milestone are a declaration of technological sovereignty. They signal China's long-term vision to create a parallel tech world where it no longer depends on Western approvals, tools, or standards. And as these chips power everything from smart cities to military communications, the geopolitical weight only grows heavier. This is the moment when technology becomes territory. That said, this isn't a done deal. SMIC's reliance on DUV multi-patterning means lower yields, higher defect rates, and greater production costs. Scaling up to meet global demand may prove difficult without the throughput efficiency of EUV. Carbon nanotube technologies, while promising, still face stability and manufacturability challenges. And while Huawei leads China's 6G charge, other nations are not far behind. Japan, South Korea, the US, and Europe are already funding parallel 6G initiatives, and a global standards war is likely to emerge over the next five years. So what comes next? Here's the twist. The most important battle may not be happening in clean rooms or testing labs. It may be happening in code if Huawei and SMIC pair this hardware leap with sovereign AI models, edge frameworks, and their own operating systems. The digital future could fracture into one world powered by U.S. software and another shaped by Chinese platforms. Once that line is crossed, it's not just tech supremacy, it's cultural and cognitive independence. So what do you think? Are we witnessing the dawn of a new technological order where Chinese chips redefine the rules? Or is this a short-term victory with long-term obstacles? Will Huawei's 6G and SMIC's 3 nanometers GAA reshape global power or stall under production pressure? Let me know in the comments. And if you believe the chip war is just getting started, like this video, share it with someone still stuck in 5G thinking, and subscribe for more deep tech breakdowns. Because one thing is clear, the future isn't waiting.